promising I create characters. What kind of characters? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds of them. James Douglas Morrison, better known as Jim Morrison, was a poet, songwriter, and probably best known for being the distinctive voice of The Doors, one of the most beloved bands of the 60s and 70s. But it wasn't just the poetry and the music Morrison made with his band that made him stand out. He also had a wild personality, an intense stage presence, and outrageous lifestyle. Throughout his life, he had somewhat of an obsession for death and personal reinvention and discovery. This came out as vulgar and gloomy themes and disturbing characters in his lyrics. Some would argue that these characters represented Morrison's alter egos, segments of his self-sabotaging behavior as he dealt with the sudden fame and acceptance. In this video, we'll examine these characters together with the band's history to understand Jim Morrison's personality even better. Jim Morrison was born on December 8th, 1943 in Melbourne, Florida to mother Clara Virginia and father George Stephen Morrison. When he was just four years old, he witnessed a car accident. He described the scene as Indians scattered all over the highway, bleeding to death. Later on, he referred to this incident in his Doors song, Peace Frog, and his spoken word performances on Dawn's Highway and Ghost Song. Dead Indians, maybe one or two of them, they just leaped into my soul. Morrison's father and sister, on the other hand, believe he exaggerated the story. Morrison personally believed it to be one of the most formative experiences in his life, though. One of the reasons why Morrison might have exaggerated the story is because he was later captivated by stories, mythology, and the archetype of the shaman. In tribal communities around the world, the shaman would be described as a magician, someone who would spiritually heal and guide other people. He's also described as a person who could tap into other people's consciousness, much like how Morrison would tap into people's attention with his lyrics and singing. I don't think the shaman, from what I've read, is uh, really too interested in defining his role in, in society, he's just more interested in um, uh, pursuing his own fantasies. This is one of the first characters that Morrison became synonymous with. A person who called forth his unraveled spirit on stage and in writing and impacted the lives of thousands of people. The reason why Morrison was so interested in learning about the role of the shaman might be because he wanted to understand himself. We know for a fact that he didn't consider himself a good singer. So even during his time of fame, he was still trying to find his place in the world. I think of myself as a, as uh, an intelligent, sensitive human being with the soul of a clown, <laughs> which always forces me to blow it at the most uh, important moments. Now, as a young man, Jim Morrison was an avid reader. He was particularly interested in philosophers and poets. Allen Ginsberg, Charles Baudelaire, and Albert Camus are just three names on a long list of people that inspired him to read and write. But Nietzsche was arguably one of his favorites. One of his English teachers once reported that Jim was reading way more than any other student in the entire class. The themes and topics he was into during his senior year in college was also very offbeat. Demonology, the study of demons. The reason why he was attracted to the dark facets of belief and human nature might be rooted in his family life. He didn't see much of his father as a young child. George Stephen Morrison was a decorated Navy Admiral and was very occupied with his work because of America's involvement in the Vietnam War at the time. Because of this, he spent long periods of time away from his children. The family also moved a lot, so it's safe to say that Jim didn't grow up in a traditional household. The mood I get for most of it is kind of a heavy, kind of a sort, sort of gloomy feeling. 
like of someone not quite at home. Fast forward, The Doors had released their first album, and when his father heard this record, he wrote a letter to his son advising him to give up his musical career because of what he saw as a complete lack of talent in this direction. Because of his dark childhood experiences, lack of connection with his father, and his interest in demons and philosophy, there's traces of dark characters throughout many of his songs. One of the most iconic characters was the Lizard King. This character came to life in celebration of the Lizard, a long musical piece made up of song fragments and spoken poetry that was first released on their live album Absolutely Live in 1970. A portion of the subject matter in the song project people as animals, dogs, lions, and snakes. It seems as if Morrison interpreted his environment as chaotic and wild, that people around him acted purely on instinct. Lions in the street and roaming, dogs in heat, rabbit foaming. But the reason why the Lizard King nickname became synonymous with Morrison might have something to do with his actions at the time. In 1968, when they recorded The Soft Parade, their fourth album, Morrison often came drunk or high to the studio. He had all the success in the world, all the freedom in the world. He could do anything he wanted. I'm the Lizard King. I can do anything. Most artists would rub off and neglect nicknames and phrases that fans would come up with. But when people started calling Morrison the Lizard King... Oh, I liked it. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoy it. Another interesting quote from this interview goes like this. I used to see the universe as a mammoth, peristaltic snake, and I used to see all the people and objects and landscapes as little scales. As you can see, Morrison was fascinated with reptiles, how we evolved from them, and the similarities they have to humans as a species. But was he simply fascinated with reptiles from a real-life point of view? We know that he was into demonology and the spiritual and mythological realms. In East Asian mythology, you'll often hear stories of serpents and dragons, intelligent beings with magical and godlike abilities. In ancient Egyptian texts, the snake represented time, while according to the creation myths of Jewish texts, the snake represented the devil himself. In The Doors, When You're Strange, a documentary from 2009, the creators compare Morrison to the devilish snake, mostly because of his unfiltered, drug-induced behavior on stage. The reason why Morrison had such a wild lifestyle wasn't just related to his bloated ego and obsession with drugs though. His bandmates several times recalled how he went through episodes of depression and that his mind often wandered to places where normal people would rarely go. For example, in some interviews he would talk openly about death and how he thought scientists would be able to outsmart death sometime in the close future. Morrison was afraid of death, like anyone else, but maybe he thought about it more than the average person, since he was already on top of the world. He simply didn't need to worry about anything else. He obviously wanted to live forever, forever going back to his youth, and, like a lizard, continuously shed his skin. Now, fast forward to when Morrison was found dead in his bathtub in Paris, they also discovered a notebook that was simply named the Paris Journal. In a series of poems in this book, he would write about Billy, the killer hitchhiker. Tell them you came, and saw and looked into my eyes, and saw the shadow of the guard receding, thoughts in time and out of season. The hitchhiker stood by the side of the road and leveled his thumb in the calm calculus of reason. Morrison notably starred as a hitchhiker in his own film, H.W.Y. and American Pastoral. The film was made in 69 and contained mostly scenes of Morrison out in nature and driving. At a certain point in the movie, he hitches a ride from the desert to the city 
and all of a sudden we see that he drives the car that he just hitchhiked with. There's no trace of the car owner, and during a phone call later on, it's revealed that he killed that person. Wild child, full of grace. Now, if the shaman represented the search for his place in the world, and the lizard king represented his wild lifestyle and obsession with death, then the killer hitchhiker represented the most gruesome tendencies of his imagination. But his gruesome tendencies didn't just pour out into his poetry and singing, they pour out into his life as well. A good example of this is when they played a show in New Haven, Connecticut. Before the concert, a cop found Morrison and a girl making out in a shower stall backstage. Not recognizing Jim, he tells him to leave. Jim said he could go fuck himself. The cop mazed him. With bloodshot eyes, he joined the band on stage just a few moments later. And during the first song, he told the audience about what had just happened to him. Jim kept referencing the cop as a little blue man in a little blue suit with a little blue cap. It didn't go long before cops entered the stage and arrested him. This event became a turning point for the band and their reputation. All of a the sudden, they became a dangerous and unpredictable band. Instead of expecting a great musical performance at their shows, fans expected Morrison to tear it all to pieces. The Hitchhiker had now made his public appearance. Despite of the meltdown, the band still experienced tons of commercial success. All their albums turned gold, and they were mentioned in the same line as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Their troubles as a band hit a new climax though, when they played their opening show of a US tour in Miami. After the concert, Morrison was sued for indecent exposure and for the use of obscene language. The lawsuit was controversial, since there were countless cops at the concert, and no one had tried to stop Morrison from exposing himself. There were also countless photos being taken, and none of them proved the claims. Jim did not expose himself at Miami, okay? <laughs> he was drunk that night, and very political, and it was a mess musically, uh, but it was theatrical. And in defending himself for the use of obscene language, he referred to the Second Amendment, the freedom of speech. Morrison was still found guilty, and was sentenced to four months of hard labor. The Doris lawyer quickly filed an appeal. But the case flipped the band into an even deeper state of limbo. It didn't help that the US was covered by a blanket of violence as well. Several important leaders such as John F. Kennedy, his brother Robert F. Kennedy, and Martin Luther King Jr., and artists such as Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin all died during this period. The band still kept on going though, despite of the tragic societal backdrops and Morrison's meltdown, and released Morrison Hotel in 1970 and L.A. Woman in 71. Riders on the storm. There's a killer. Morrison is still the same, the only difference being that he added cocaine to his routine intake of alcohol. Despite of Morrison's ongoing personal issues, the other members did recall that the band dynamics were much better during this point. They were back to being the good old band that practiced in their garage. Shortly after, Morrison got together with Pamela Corson, a girl he had had a turbulent relationship with. She dreamed about sharing her life with him, and he bought into that dream too. So just when the band finished mixing their new album, LA Woman, he told his friends that he'd leave. And on April 17th of 1971, he went to Paris with Pamela. But little did he know that he'd never return to the US again. For some time, things started to look better. He shaved his beard, he didn't drink as much, and he focused more on his poetry. He and Pam spent a lot of time together, and they generally seemed to be happy. But one night, after drinking heavily, he didn't feel well. He took a bath, he called out to Pam, are you still there? And then he died. Jim Morrison was in my eyes a very gifted vocalist and lyricist. Part of that gift might have been the result of the unstable upbringing and the early adult life that he had. 
He was confused with who he was and wanted to be. He was equally scared and fascinated by death and darkness, and in many cases, the darkness came to life in his performances and lifestyle. Jim was ultimately a man of many faces. In this case, the shaman, the lizard king, and the hitchhiker. But keep in mind that these represent just a few glimpses of who he really was. When I sing, I create characters. What kind of characters? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds of them. 